All right, so the rest of the chapter, we're going to skip section two, but is on solving quadratics. Um, and you can solve by graphing, um, but that's the section that we're going to skip. So um, before we do today's um, method, using square roots, Okay, one thing that you've got to understand, okay, the solution to a quadratic is where the graph crosses the x-axis. So if we graphed, okay, so, and we're not going to graph, we're going to do square roots today, but if we graphed that, that's the solution, and that's the solution. There's two solutions, okay? Um, in most cases, there are, it is possible to have no solution, and it is possible to have just one solution, but most of the problems are going to have two solutions, okay? And they could both be positive, they could both be negative, they could be one of each. It's probably more common to have one of each, but there's no rule that says it has to be one of each or it has to be this or that, okay? Um, so where the graph crosses the x-axis. So really we're looking at x-intercepts. We talked about that in chapter 8. Or we're looking for the zeros. Remember that was another term for where it crosses the x-axis, okay? So <clears throat> when you have a quiz later this week and you see a graph and it wants to know the solutions, it's where the graph crosses the x-axis. It doesn't matter what the graph looks like, okay? We're not going to do any of these or graph any of these, but if you had a graph that looked like that, it has one two, three solutions, okay? I don't care what the graph looks like. Where it crosses the x-axis is the solution. That's a major kind of definition, concept, whatever you want to call it, that you need to understand, okay? All right, so we've actually done solving before. Find the zeros, we did solution, we did solving in chapter 8. It just was called finding the zeros or finding the x-intercepts. Okay, so <clears throat> I just want to point out the different ways that you can solve a quadratic. You can solve by graphing, which is section 9.2, but we've done a ton of graphing, so we're going to skip that one. Um, and it's, not, it's the least reliable of all the different ways to solve because if it doesn't cross at a whole number, there's really no way to tell what the answer is. So if it crossed at three and a quarter, there's no way to guess that that's three and a quarter versus three and one third or something like that, okay? Um, so we've done solving where we've had to factor what times what is 10 that adds up to 7, 5, and 2? Okay, and then we went, oh, x plus 5 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0, and we've done this before. We did this in Chapter 7. We did find the zeros, and we just said, oh, it's the opposite of what you see. So I see positive 5 right here, and the, the solution is um, the opposite. So positive 5 to negative 5, positive 2 to negative 2. Okay, so we've done solving before. Okay, now we're going to use solving using square roots, which is probably the easiest one out of all of them. Okay, so if we had... Um, just a really basic problem. Okay, <clears throat> here's 
here's the thing to look at too. I have an exponent of two. That means I'm gonna have two answers. If you solve an equation, a normal old equation, you have like, you know, two x plus five equals 10, you know, whatever. Um, there's no exponent rule. Well, the exponent's a one. That means there's one solution. Okay, again, it's possible for no solution, but it means, you know, the exponent really tells you how many uh, solutions there's gonna be. So, um, when you have the x squared by itself, so that's a key, um, all you do is do the square root of both sides. And so you might be thinking like, well, the square root of 16 is four. So how are there two solutions? You just said the exponent of two, there's two solutions. Um, well, the definition of a square root is a number times itself. So what's the square root of 16? Four, because four times four is 16. Um, but so is negative four. Negative four times negative four is 16. Okay, so when we're solving, so that's kind of a key here. When we're solving an equation and with a square root, then we're gonna do positive four and negative four, or positive eight and negative eight. If we're just doing the stuff like we've done the last couple days, oh, the square root of 25 is five. We don't need to put and negative five because we're not solving an equation. Okay, but when we solve an equation, you have to put positive and negative. And it'll be written like this sometimes too. Positive four and negative four. Okay, so it has two solutions. Okay, um, so like your first set of problems are gonna say determine the number of real solutions. Okay, so if I can do the square root or if it's just positive. Okay, so technically, if I did that one, well, I can't do the square root of 10, but it's still, it's a decimal. Like, I, it's just not a whole number. I could type square root of 10 into a calculator and get an answer. Okay, so any positive number when, the x, when you just have x squared to what's called real solutions. There is a such thing as imaginary solutions. That's just algebra two, okay? Um, all right, so if we get like x squared equals, you know, negative 12. So, and I went to do the square root. What times what, you know, the same number to equal a negative? You know, two, it's either gonna be two positive numbers, when you multiply those together, you get a positive, or two negative numbers, but a negative negative is a positive. So a negative number under a square root is impossible, you can't do it, um, unless you use algebra two, which we're not doing. So for us, this is a no solution. Okay, and so we would say there are no real solutions. There is a way to do this using a concept, like I said, called imaginary numbers. Okay, so if it's a negative number under the square root, we have no real solutions. Okay, and then I said it's possible to have one solution. That's if we get zero. Because if I do the square root like that, I get x equals zero. And there's no such thing as positive or negative zero. It's just zero. Okay, so Okay, so here's kind of a, you know, the beginning part. It's gonna, like I said, the directions say, uh, let me read them. Determine the number of real solutions of the equation, then solve the equation using square roots. 
So all the solving will be like that first one. X squared equals 16, or X squared equals 9, or X squared equals 49, or, you know, all of them will have a square root that you can do. Okay? So if it's a positive number, it means it does have a square root, and you need to figure out what the square root is. If it's a negative number, no real solutions. If it's zero, the answer is zero, and it has one real solution. Okay? All right, your other problems um, are going to be like solving, but they're going to, you're going to have to do some like adding and subtracting and possibly some dividing. Okay? So if I get a problem like that, I need to get the x squared by itself. That is the primary goal because then I can do the square root and I get x equals positive and negative 3. Okay, fairly straightforward. Um, <clears throat> if I had, this is kind of a trick question. Um, so get the x squared by itself. And when I go to do the square root, don't get tripped up by the 16, okay? It's a negative number. I can't do the square root of a negative number. So I was going to put x equals no solution, but we just put no solution. <clears throat> okay, so no matter, like 16 has a square root, it's 4, but I can't do it with a negative. So done. No solution. Okay, but I have to get the x squared by itself first. Okay, um, so here's kind of a, a thing that can happen. So I'm going to subtract 50. And so you might like think, Oh, it's negative over there by the 50. You know, no solution. Well, keep going. Negative, negative is positive. So now I can do the square root because it's a positive number. Okay, so you got to get the x squared by itself first. Then, if it's negative, it's no solution. Okay? Um, so the thing also is, when you get the x squared by itself, um, you're going to be able to do the square root for most of them. But it's possible... Um, I'm trying to look at the problems to see what's going to happen here. 49. So the last couple, um, you know, you might have something like this. I'm going to change the 4 to a 9. Okay, so when we go to solve it, twenty one minus one is one. Oh, I forgot the squared. Divide by nine. Okay, and so we get like, oh, it's a fraction. Well, remember this means square root of 1 on top, square root of 9 on the bottom. I can do them separately. Um, well, and I shouldn't have that squared there. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 9 is 3. 
remember, also negative. So you could put the plus and minus, like one third. Okay, so it is possible to get fractions. So you could have um, you know, if you had a problem that ended up like that, I can do them separate. In fact, I should do them separate. Five, seven, positive and negative. Okay, so the last two on your assignment, it will end up like that, where you have a fraction. Okay, it looks like the other ones will all end up being a whole number um, where you have a square root. So like, you know, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, all the ones that have square roots. Um, and then the last couple will have um, fractions. Okay? All right, so we're going to do a little bit more tomorrow with this square root stuff, but today should be hopefully fairly straightforward because of the answers end up whole numbers. So we'll look at tomorrow, like what happens when they're not whole numbers, or they're not square roots, rather. Okay, have a great day, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.